Welcome to another deep dive. Today, we're going to be exploring... Uh, the fifth element of health. Yeah, the fifth element. Mm. We all know about earth, water, air, fire. But the classics. The classics. But could there be something else? Something we've been missing? It really makes you think, doesn't it? What if our well-being is actually tied to the Earth's energy, uh, like profoundly connected? That's exactly what we're going to be looking at today. You send us some excerpts from PEMF, The Fifth Element of Health by Brian Myers. Oh yeah, the book. And it seems like you're especially curious about uh, whether these Earth frequencies really impact us. Definitely. And if all this talk about Electra's mod is really something to worry about. Yes. So hopefully this deep dive will help us answer this question. I think so. All right, so Myers starts off by reminding us about the delicate balance of elements needed for life to there. Right. It's got to be just right. From the whole universe. The whole universe. Down to our own planet. Yeah. It's pretty amazing. It is. Everything needs to be in a very specific balance. Everything's got to work together. And he says that as humans, we need to connect with these elements in their purest forms. So like natural food, clean water, fresh air. Yeah, those are basics. And sunlight for that fire element. Okay, so far so good, right? Uh, Pretty standard stuff. Exactly. And then he throws a curveball. He does. That's where things get really interesting. He introduces this idea of a fifth element. Earth's natural PEMFs. PEMFs. Pulsed electromagnetic fields. Pulsed electromagnetic fields. Something from the Earth. So he's saying that these PEMS yeah. are just as crucial to our health as those other four. Just as important as food, water, air, sunlight. It's like we've been missing a key ingredient. Exactly. Wow. Okay, this is already challenging my conventional understanding of health. And that leads right into the next point. Oh, does it? The body electric. The body electric. You don't know we often think of the body as this kind of like... Like a machine? Yeah, like a machine. Uh, Myers is saying that's way too simple. Okay, I'm intrigued. He's using this thing called quantum field theory. Ooh, quantum physics. It's revolutionizing physics. It shows that energy fields and information fields are actually fundamental to reality. So instead of just the physical stuff, Myers is saying we need to understand the body's energy. Yeah. He explains how our cells are always generating and responding to electromagnetic fields. All the time, constantly. So if we're beings of energy, does that mean we're interacting with the Earth's energy field? Oh, good question. Are we in sync or out of tune? Hold that thought. Because Myers actually addresses that next. He introduces this amazing concept called the living matrix. It's kind of like a communication network that connects every single cell in your body. Electromagnetic signals and even biophotons. Biophotons? Light emitted by the cell. Yeah, it's super fast communication. I mean, it's mind-blowing to think that all this is happening inside us all the time. It is. So we've got this internal energy network, but how does it connect to the Earth? Ah, uh, that's where the Earth's magnetic field comes in. Because the magnetic field and someone called the Schumann resonance... The Schumann Resonance. Can you explain what that is? So the Earth's magnetic field is created by the movement of molten iron in the Earth's core. And those movements actually create these pulsing frequencies. And that's the Schumann Resonance. That's the Schumann Resonance. It's kind of like the Earth humming its own tune. He explains the things like lightning strikes add to these frequencies. Right, and they resonate between the Earth's surface and the atmosphere. It's like the Earth has a heartbeat. It does. And guess what? The primary Schumann resonance frequency is about 7.83 hertz. 7.83 hertz. That's almost the exact same as the alpha brainwave frequency that humans experience when they're relaxing. So maybe we evolved to be in sync with the Earth's rhythm? It's possible, right? Myers thinks so. He presents research showing that our brains, our bodies, even our individual cells resonate most strongly to frequencies within the 0 to 30 hertz range. Makes sense. And guess what else falls in that range? I bet I know the Earth, Schumann, and geomagnetic frequencies. Exactly. Body-mind-Earth connection. All connect. And to make it even more convincing, Myers says that our bodies actually emit those same frequencies. Ugh. They've been detected up to 15 feet away. Wow, so we're like walking antennas. It seems like it, constantly interacting with the Earth's energy field. Which brings us to the potential downsides of our modern lives. All the technology. Right, all the electrosmob. Man-made electromagnetic fields from things like power lines, Wi-Fi cell phones. He's saying that all that stuff is interfering with the Earth's natural frequency. Right, disrupting our connection. And to make matters worse, he says that the Earth's magnetic field is actually weakening. Oh no. He even mentioned this Japanese study where workers in metal buildings 
which blocked natural PEMS. They were blocked off. They experienced all these health issues. But like hand issues. Fatigue, insomnia, all sorts of things. We called it magnetic deficiency syndrome. Magnetic deficiency syndrome. It makes you think, doesn't it? We spent so much time indoors surrounded by technology. Yeah, cut off from nature. Could that disconnect be contributing to some of the health challenges we're seeing today? It's a good question to think about as we move into the next part of our deep dive. Definitely a lot to ponder. A lot to plunder. But for now, we'll take a break and come back to that in part two. So we've talked about this potential disconnect from the Earth's frequencies. Right. But is there anything we can actually deal about it? I mean, we can't all just live off the grid. That's true. Modern life has its demands. But Miners offers a solution. He does. PEMF therapy. PEMF therapy. It's a way to supplement our exposure to these beneficial frequencies. So like artificially recreating those Earth frequencies. Exactly. PEMF devices generate these pulsed magnetic fields. Pulsed is the key word there. Pulsing is key. They mimic the Earth's natural rhythms. And he claims this can re-energize our cells, improve circulation, even reduce pain, and promote healing. Yeah. It almost sounds too good to be true. Well, he does cite research. Oh. Including a four-year NASA study. Yeah. yeah, NASA. On PNF therapy's effectiveness for tissue regeneration. Wow. They don't mess around when it comes to science. They don't. Okay. That definitely adds some credibility. But wouldn't just spending more time in nature achieve the same thing? That's a good question. And Myers acknowledges that being in nature is really beneficial. Right. But it's not always realistic for everyone to unplug completely. Right. So he proposes a two-pronged approach. Okay. Minimizing our exposure to electrosmog. So plain defense. Exactly. And then actively increasing our exposure to beneficial PEM at office. I like it. So what kind of specific actions do you recommend? Well, first he emphasizes the importance of those foundational elements. Oh, yeah? Like a healthy diet, organic whole foods, pure water, fresh air... Ideally in nature, safe sun exposure for vitamin D. Those are the basics. The basics. All of those help optimize our energy systems. Makes sense. Making us more receptive to those earth frequencies. Okay, so besides the basics, what else is there? Remember that Japanese study about magnetic deficiency syndrome? Yeah. Myers suggests something as simple as walking barefoot on the earth. Grounding. Grounding. Can help reconnect us with those natural PEMFs. There's actually research on that. There is. A growing body of research. I gotta try that. But I bet he also suggests invest in one of those PEMF devices. You know it. He recommends a high-quality PEMF device. Of course he does. Ideally with a full body mat. A full body mat. Okay, so if he just trying to sell us something here, or is there really something to this fifth element of health idea? That's a fair question. Yeah. He clearly benefits from promoting PEMF therapy. Right. But the research he cites, especially that NASA study, suggests it's not all hype. So maybe there's something to it. Maybe. We should approach it with healthy skepticism, but I think it's worth exploring further. So where does that leave us? Sounds like there's some promise and evidence, but maybe not enough to convince everyone. Yeah, more research is always needed. Always. But Myers brings up these important points about our relationship with the Earth's energy. We spent centuries trying to control and dominate nature. Yeah. But maybe it's time for a different approach. Like what? What if we focused on reconnecting and aligning ourselves with nature's rhythms? Aligning with nature's rhythms. I like that. <laughs> but before we go full on nature guru, there's one thing I'm still wondering about. Electrosmog. Ah, uh, yes. Electrosmog. Is it really as bad as some people claim? And can we actually do anything to minimize our exposure? Those are great questions that we'll get to in part three. All right. So electrosmog. It sort of kind of scary. It does kind of have a science fiction vibe to it. Like something out of a movie. Yeah. But is it really as bad as some people make it out to be? Well, Miter certainly thinks it's something we should be paying attention to. So what's would big deal with Electra's mod? Well, he calls it a form of pollution. Pollution? Electromagnetic pollution. Ah. He says that before we had electricity, there were only these natural frequencies. Like the Schumann resonance and the Earth's magnetic field, sunlight, the occasional bursts from lightning... But now the electromagnetic spectrum is just packed with all these man-made frequencies from power lines, radio waves, cell towers, Wi-Fi. We've gone from this peaceful, natural soundscape to like a blaring cacophony of electromagnetic noise. Exactly. And it makes you wonder what all that's doing to our bodies. So what about everyday stuff like power lines, cell phones, Wi-Fi? What kind of damage can those frequencies do? He cites studies linking prolonged exposure to power line frequencies to an increased risk of cancer. 
power lines, and cancer. And then there's the issue of microwave frequencies. Microwaves. Like the ones in microwave ovens. The same ones. And it turns out those frequencies are emitted by cell phones, Wi-Fi routers, even some baby monitors. Wait, baby monitors? I thought those were supposed to be safe. It's one, not necessarily. Myers explains that many baby monitors in the U.S. emit this constant microwave signal. So both the baby and the parent are being exposed to continuous radiation. That's kind of scary. It is. He suggests opt-in for corded or voice-activated models instead. And minimize exposure. To minimize exposure. Okay, so it's not just about the big stuff like power lines, but also these everyday devices we don't even think about. Exactly. And Meyer says it's all about awareness. So he's saying we need to ditch all technology and go live in a cave. He's not saying we need to go completely off the grid, but he does offer some tips for minimizing our exposure. Okay, give us the lid on, look to my dear. Well, first, he emphasizes the importance of distance. Distance, yeah. The intensity of these fields drops off really quickly as you move away from the source. To, like, keep your distance from stuff. Exactly. So keep your distance from high EMF appliances, like your microwave. Use speakerphone or an air tube headset when you're on your cell phone. Move your Wi-Fi router away from where you spend a lot of time. Okay, distance. Got it. What else? Hardwire your devices whenever you can. Like with Ethernet cables instead of Wi-Fi? Exactly. And unplug stuff when you're not using it. To get rid of those electromagnetic fields. Exactly. He also suggests replacing those energy-saving CFL light bulbs. Do you frown? Yeah, the compact fluorescent ones. Ah! But those are supposed to be good for the environment. I know. But apparently they emit a lot of radiation. He recommends using traditional incandescent bulbs instead. Especially in areas where you spend a lot of time. So now it's like you got to choose between Electro's Mod and Climate Change. I know it's a tough one. <laughs> But I think Meyer's point is that we need to be aware of these trade-offs and make informed choices. He's not saying throw away all your technology. No, but use it mindfully. Mindful technology. I like that. So what's the bottom line here for our listeners? I think the key takeaway is that our bodies are electric. We've evolved in tune with the Earth's natural frequencies and disrupt in that harmony as consequences. Right. We may not know the full impact of Electrosmol yet. Yeah but we can't just ignore it. So it's about making informed choices and taking steps to minimize potential harm? Exactly. It's about taking responsibility for our energetic well-being. I like that energetic well-being. It's just as important as our physical health. So maybe by tuning in to our own energy and the energy of the earth, we can not only improve our health, but also find a sense of harmony and connection that's been missing. That's a beautiful thought. And it is. And that's something worth striving for. Definitely. All this talk about energy is making me want to go for a barefoot walk in the park. I <laughs> said, count me in. Always up for an adventure in nature. But first, I'm going to unplug my Wi-Fi router and swap out those CFL. Small steps. Small steps. But they can lead to big changes. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive, everyone. We hope you learn something new. And that you feel empowered to take control of your health. Stay curious, stay grounded, and stay tuned.